Hello everybody, today we're going to be talking about the murder of Elzada Pauline Young. So Halloween in 1940, John Phelps, which is Pauline's stepfather, went to a boy named Albert's house to bring Pauline home. And it made it very easy for him to find her because Albert lived on the same road as the young Phelps house. Well, John took Pauline home from being there for days on end. And when they went home, John just wanted his family to be together. And he hoped that Pauline would stay. But Pauline is a 16-year-old girl and she just wanted to be free and she didn't want to be at her home. Pauline then went on to say, to hell with you, to hell with mother, to hell with helping with supper. John then went and locked all the doors and he hoped that this would not, like him locking the doors would keep Pauline from leaving. This is when Pauline then grabbed a knife and she went after her stepfather. He then grabbed the closest item to him, which was a hammer, and he threw it at her. It then hit her directly in the forehead. She fell to the ground and he knew at that moment when he checked her, she in fact was dead. Now, knowing people would definitely not believe him, he stored her body in the basement and then cleaned up the kitchen. He knew that when he was doing this, he would have to figure out a way to get rid of her body and to kind of like shield people from what happened. Now, when the other children and Thelma returned home, they had dinner and then Thelma and the remaining kids then went to a Halloween party at a neighbor's house. And this is when John sat by himself and thought. Thought about what he needed to do and thought about, hey, what am I supposed to do with my stepdaughter's body that is now in the basement? And yeah, how do I get rid of it? Well, the following day when Thelma and the other kids went to school, like Thelma went to work, the kids went to school. This is when John got to work. He grabbed some tools and then started dissecting Pauline's body in the crawl space. He then took various gunny bags, put some of her body parts in them, buried some in the crawl space in like underneath the porch of the house. He then took a few of the bags, put it in between the coal house and the hen house in their backyard, and then moved some soil over it. He even asked some neighbors to move the kids' play place on top of the disturbed soil. That way, just nobody thought about, hey, what's there? John then would keep Pauline's head and put it in the remaining gunny sack, and then apparently brought it to Rockland Harbor and threw it in. Now, the worst part about this crime is that he brought Pauline's body into the crawl space of the house and then hacked her body apart with an axe and a kitchen knife. It was then after this when John finally reported her missing. Now, the medical examiner that worked on this case, Dr. Wiseman, said that this was the most horrific crime he had ever seen in Knox County history as being the medical examiner for Knox County, Maine. John Phelps then would try and kill himself after being consumed by his guilt by taking a few poisonous pills and then going on to slitting his wrists. When he was found on Spring Street, the police brought him to the hospital. He then revealed that he had a note in his pocket and that this note indeed would reveal who he was and what he had done. It revealed that he indeed was John Phelps and that he killed his stepdaughter, Pauline Young. He killed her, cut up her body, buried her in gunny sacks, and then he eventually went on to reveal that he threw the last bag containing her head into the harbor. Now, the police went around and they actually, like, found the bags that he had buried around the house. And according to the Herald, Dr. Wiseman ordered the body parts to be brought to the funeral home and that some of the body organs had never been recovered. Now, the only bag they had not recovered was the one with her head. They had brought a boat in and put a hook and tried to rake the harbor floor, but they found nothing. They even brought in the harbor guard from Whitehead to help the search for her head, but they also found nothing. It's also important to know that during this time, the indictment would have to wait due to not having the correct people to formally indict John Phelps for the murder of Pauline. John was even brought to the harbor after the police initially couldn't find the bag with her head, and he even pointed out where the bag was. But due to his faint condition, like his condition indeed, like he fainted after pointing out where the bag would be. 
He then was sent back to the hospital, and pending his health, he would finally be indicted. Now, during his healing, John would continuously burst into tears about what he had done, and eventually he was released. And on that same day he was released, he was brought to jail and indicted on charges of murder. The following day, he was brought to court for his indictment, and he would be held in jail until the trial started. Now, the trial started in February of 1941, and John would have three charges, murder, dismemberment, and abandonment of a body. And also at this time, if you, it was in the works that if you dismembered a body, you automatically were charged with murder. It was also speculated that Thelma had something to do with Pauline's murder, but when the press went to ask her about it, it was revealed that Thelma had already moved to Holton, Maine to get, to like, remove herself from this situation. Now, John, when he said he was guilty and like during his trial before a sentence was given, he said he was sorry that he threw the hammer at Pauline and that she came at him with a knife. He then broke down and kept talking about like, like he kept talking, but his crying overtook his words and nobody could understand him. He was inconsolable. He was sentenced to life in prison and he spent part of his jail sentence at the Thomaston jail and in 1963, he even petitioned his sentence. He said that he was fully rehabilitated and that he spent most of his time in the jail hospital instead of actually in Gen Pop. When his lawyers helped him with his petition, it was initially turned away, but he would be paroled the following year. John Phelps would end up dying in 1968 after spending some time with his family. Now, the story is a legend even until this day. It haunts Rockland, Maine till this day. The house of which Pauline was murdered was considered a haunted house, but was torn down. There was a local resident at the time said that she believed John threw Pauline's head in the quarry instead of the harbor. And this also brought forth another story about John when somebody asked him what he was doing. He said that he was drowning kittens in the quarry and he was also holding a gunny sack. What are your thoughts? Where do you think Pauline's head is? I personally think it's in the quarry. But that, my friends, is the murder of Pauline Young. And I hope you guys enjoy and stay tuned for another video.